you have got something new, assuming you are in Hyderabad and you have got a bird from Kolkata. So your birds are coming from a very high humid place to extremely dry place. So that also has a role to play. As we go forward, I'm going to discuss about that. And then of course the diet, what is the kind of diet the bird is getting also has a role to play because it can determine the thickness of the shell, the weight loss and everything, you know, so diet has a very important role to play. And then of course the climate which is part of the, yeah, next. So these are the five basic points that I see that you need to cover to ensure that you have a successful hatch. You need to have a fertile egg of course. If the egg is not fertile, you are not going to get anything no matter what you do. Second is your temperature, humidity, turning of the egg and ventilation. A lot of times, especially if you have a closed incubator, you tend to leave the eggs there continuously for the entire incubation period. You do not open it. So the air inside is stable. You know, you have heating elements. Anything that's heating, there is some amount of carbon dioxide being produced. Your egg is also doing the same. If there is no proper ventilation, your chances of success, jo ande ki hatching ka hai, success will be very low. So we, are, we need to make sure that there is good uh, uh, ventilation in your egg. Before going further into uh, incubation, incubate kyon karte hain Lack of parental instinct. Kai baar maa baap bachcho ki ande ki dekhbali thik se nahi karte hain. They do not take care of the eggs. So we harvest the egg so that we can get better success rates. Weak or loss of parent, kai baar maa baap mar jate hain. Ya phir maa ya baap kamzor hoti hai. Especially you see this in poultry. अगर you have a really rare species और आप उनको incubate करने लगा दो pheasants में, तो she will sit nearly a month on the egg, losing weight. She eat very less during that time. So you harvest the egg and give it to a silky, or you give it to another fowl, or you give it into an incubator, so that आपकी जो parent stock है उसपे stress कम पड़े. That's one of the reasons why we do that. Sometimes the eggs are damaged inside the nest box. Or the eggs are weak, so chances of them to hatch is impossible. So you have to harvest those eggs if you want a successful hatch. Environmental factors, you know, extremely hot, extremely cold, and you know, lot of uh, thunderstorms. So there's huge change in humidity and stuff like that. So that's another reason why you want to bring your eggs in. And one of the most common reasons, unfortunately, is increase in production. So, if you are incubating your eggs, the chances of your production exponentially grows up. I'll give you an example in my facility. If you leave a Amazon parrot to breed on its own, it will breed only once during the year. You can get anything between one baby to four babies match in a clutch. So that's all that you can breed from a pair of Amazon. If you're keeping a pair of uh, black palm cockatoo, they lay just one egg. Rare occasion they lay two eggs. The max you can get is one baby or two babies in a year for a black palm. That's not really viable. You know, it's, it's no fun, whether it's financially or otherwise. You want to increase the production. So, in my facility, what I do is that when the first clutch of eggs are laid, we remove the eggs on day one itself. As the eggs are laid, we harvest the eggs out. That's the first clutch of eggs. Within a span of 15 days to 30 days, the birds start to breed again. They lay the second clutch of eggs, right? But those eggs we do not take out on day one. We let the parents incubate the egg till day 10, 15, 20, you know, depending on your incubator status and your parents, how good the parents are. So we let them incubate for a few days. 
see if they are doing a decent job or a good job. Because you need to know whether your parents are good, right? So you keep a track, you know. You write down on the cage, very good, you know, with a small marker pen, so that you remember. So you, you keep a track, so you have a history. Then third is when I leave the eggs with the parents. For them to successfully hatch, preferably even raise the babies on their own. Because the moment you try to go for a fourth clutch, there are chances of calcium shock happening, you might lose your bird. And that's, that's training the bird way too much. But again, this is not a thumb rule. Sometimes it's just one clutch, sometimes it's two clutches. But on our, most of my birds, it's three clutches. But average at my place will be about two clutches. So from a pair of Amazon, where you would have got between one to four chicks, in my place I get between four to 12 babies. Average being about six, seven babies from a pair of uh, Amazon. So that's a greed, you can say it in a way. You can call it different names, you know, you're trying to save an endangered species or whatever. But then, uh, you, know, you know, it boils down to more babies, more money, more fun. So that's uh, in production. And then is, of course, we have, uh, you know, people with scientific background, doctors. We have plenty this, uh, this year here. And I'm uh, proud to say that we have Indian uh, doctors who are practicing and uh, are present in our uh, convention like ours, you know, where normally we land up people calling people from outside. But the in-house talent has now grown and people have started to notice. I'll give you an example about artificial insemination. Our, you know, our group went to uh, Spain and, you know, we saw artificial uh, insemination of uh, uh, peregrine falcons there, I think, you know, and we were so excited and we were like, oh, wow, you know, and we heard at the Laura Park Convention about artificial insemination, oh, wow, this can be done, bloody hell, we have an Indian who's doing that here for Katakpoos in New Zealand, and do we know him? No, that's a sad state of affairs, you know. Dr. Sushil has been doing it for God knows how many years. Kakapu, one of the most endangered species. Imagine the government is calling him to go there and inseminate the Kakapus there. We have so much of in-house talent. People do not recognize that. Let's make sure that people like him are encouraged and are brought in limelight so that we can promote this in a better way and those hidden talents in our country come out. So, study is another reason why you incubate eggs. There's so much you can learn, you know, when you're incubating eggs. My goodness. Sometimes you think the chicks are dead in shell. You have no idea. They are still alive. You have an egg buddy, you know, the monitor which has the ECG. Do not believe it. Trust me. If it shows dead, no heartbeat, do not throw the eggs. It's wrong most of the times, especially in dead, for dead chicks, it's wrong most of the time. You know, small things like just take the egg, keep it outside for an overnight, next day back, put it back inside the incubator and, you know, you're lucky the egg is still alive. Maybe it just needs a shock. You know, a man dies, you pump them with electricity. Maybe that's how it is. These things, you know, are not scientifically proven. But when you start incubating eggs in large number, like we do in our facility, we come to we come across such cases. You know, there was way too many activities during the last few days, so I was not able to get. I have a, a, a blue crown pigeon egg right now. But the egg has uh, uh, the air sac is literally this shape. The you know when you see the egg inside the light, you see the shape, right? There's an egg uh, air sac on top, and you know, and this is the curve. Here it's like this. The air sac is this way, and the egg is alive. So what is going to happen? You know.
while during incubation you get to learn those things why chicks are dying in shell and stuff like that so incubation helps you learn and it will help you with your natural incubation so when you can uh, assist when you need to assist your uh, chicks now next So uh, now going into uh, artificial incubation, what what are the different methods that you can follow? One of the easiest, or earliest method used to be using another species. You know, you have uh, uh, the grey cocktails. They're amazing uh, uh, foster parents. The Bengali finches for the finch breeders, they'll know about it already. For golden finches and a lot of other finches, they use gold, uh, Bengali finches to incubate. Similarly, you can use uh, cocktails to raise a lot of your uh, Australian parakeets. In fact, you can raise even uh, conure eggs and uh, gala eggs inside of a uh, uh, cocktail egg. Uh, a good pair of uh, grey cocktail. Try not using the albinos and the mutations. Grey cocktail do a great job. You have the shiraji pigeon. No? For those who don't know, Balancer, most of his cockatoo eggs were actually incubated under uh, Shiraji uh, pigeon. You will wonder if you had gone to Balancer's place in uh, Chennai, Jemni Farms, is no longer with us. You will see he still has Shiraji pigeons. Why? Because there were a lot of eggs being incubated under Shiraji pigeon. It's so convenient. But then will the pigeon feed the babies? No. So you have to take the baby out. Only they can incubate. 